What is going on YouTube? So I'm sitting here today working on my quad. As many of you know, the version 4 firmware for the DJI NASA flight controllers just got released recently. And I decided to flash it over to my DJI NASA version 1 that's sitting inside my Team Black Sheep Discovery Pro quadcopter when I got this little interesting message that appeared on my phone. So the tall and the short of this is, you know, here in Chicago, we're known for our pretty ridiculous weather. And this little advisory is telling me that we are going to be experiencing winds from southwest to west, gusting all the way up to 45 miles per hour. So I figured, hey, what the heck, this would be a great time to test out that new version 4 firmware and figure out exactly what my gains should be. All right, so before we get too deep into testing this thing, let me tell you a little bit about how I got it set up. This is the Team Black Sheep Discovery Pro FPV quadcopter. And the power system is, I've got four 900 kV Tiger motors, each swinging a 10 by 3.8 carbon fiber propeller from RC Timer. And that's, those are controlled by some Simon K firmware flashed ESCs from RC Manchild. Source power is a 5,000 milliamp hour 4S 45C LiPo from Hobby King, Turnigy Nanotech to be exact. And my video transmitter right now is a 1.3 gigahertz, 1500 uh, milliwatt transmitter. Now it does give me a little trouble so you can see the two low pass filters I've installed on there. Running on the NASA V1 with firmware version 4. I'm using Spectrum for control right now, but I will be stepping up to Easy UHF as soon as I get the PPM wiring figured out. And the all-up weight of the copter, as you see, it's sitting right there, is 2,048 grams. So let's take this thing outside and see how it performs. All right, so I bet you can tell already just kind of how nasty it is out there. You can see the trees, which have no leaves on them right now, are really, really getting blown around pretty good up there. Now the quad's going to struggle a little bit as it uh, acquires those last few GPS satellites that it needs for a perfect lock. Let's just let it sit there and do its thing and uh, see if it can survive. It's starting to look a little better as the uh, GPS lock gets more firmly acquired. Now you'll notice I've gotten to the point now where I can start to kind of apprehensively take my hands off the controls of my DX9 and just let the autopilot do the work for me. It seems to be doing an alright job considering. So I think I might just have found the uh, sweet spot in the gains for version 4.0, at least based on the size and weight of the airframe that I've got. All right, so here's what's actually going on with the gains uh, on my NASA. Now I'm using the V2 program. That doesn't really matter, though. It does interface with the V1. My GPS is mounted to the frame, and that's why you see those values are lower than they would be if I was using a stick mount. My basic gains for pitch are 135, and that is just below where it starts to oscillate. Roll is 129. I could probably go a little bit higher, but that would make it correct too fast to make the video look too good. Yaw is 133. Any faster in the video will get uh, nasty looking. Now the vertical gains have to be high because of the way the craft is set up with a center of gravity axial to the center of thrust. It tends to oscillate in its own rotor wash as it is descending if those values are not that high. Obviously got it configured as an X-shaped quad rotor. All right, the attitude gains are 140%. Okay, I have the uh, motor RPM idle at a little bit 
below high just so I can continue as I'm descending to get some gyroscopic stability. And my emergency landing happens at 3.7 volts on my 4S. And that allows me about 14 to 16 minutes of flight time on a calm day. Day like today, it brought it down to 12. Now these limits kind of scare me in version 4. Uh, I don't want to be flying FPV, get out to 2 kilometers, and then all of a sudden not have control over the copter. So I'm going to see if I can deactivate those. And that's raw data from my compass. Everything looks to be in good order. Nothing needs to be calibrated. And this is a screen I shouldn't be on. Okay, there we go. Now, firmware, you can see version 4. Uh, the controller is a version 5.0.0.2. And the GPS is a version 1 with non-updatable firmware. So that's that. So that's all for this video, folks. And don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe so I can keep making more for you. Tell me what you think down in the comments so I can keep making better videos. And I'll see you next time.